Hey, what's up friends? I think there are three universal truths that apply to pretty much all leaders and managers. Firstly, we all wish we had more time to work on our real priorities. Secondly, we all spend far too much of our time in meetings, particularly meetings that don't add much value. And thirdly, even though we know the first two are related, we don't do anything about it. Why is this? Why is the gravitational pull of these bad practices so strong that we can't escape the orbit of them? Well, today, I'm gonna to give you a framework that can be your rocket booster, that can allow you to escape those bad practices and move to a more productive, engaged, an efficient way of working. But this is not about banning all meetings. Like some organizations say you can only have meetings over three people on the first Thursday after the full moon between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. standard time. Because some meetings can be great and leaders and managers get a lot of their work done through meetings. But although some meetings can be great, a lot of meetings suck. This is about having fewer unproductive, low value meetings to free up that time for more productive work. If we have fewer meetings, we need to know which meetings to keep and which meetings to cut. So it's a simple framework for really understanding why do we need to have meetings. So there are four reasons to have a meeting. Firstly, to communicate information, either one way or two way. Secondly, to coordinate different activities, people and teams. Thirdly, for decision making, either routine decisions or more complex decisions. And lastly, for those creative problem solving, the innovation sessions, the blue sky thinking. With this framework, we can tackle the problem of too many meetings head on. But to do that, we need to know the purpose of each meeting. So if you've been invited to a meeting and don't know the purpose, ask. That's why that tentative button in Outlook or Google's there. Go back and say, hey, I'd love to be involved. It's great to be invited but can you let me know the purpose of the meeting so I can really add some value? So once we know the purpose of the meeting, we can challenge, does it need to be a meeting? For those information sharing meetings, when it's a one-way meeting, when you don't need real-time feedback from the participants on the information you're sharing, does it need to be a meeting? Can it be an email, a video, or even a podcast? Allow those people to consume that information offline. If it's a decision-making meeting and it's a routine decision, again, does it need to be a meeting? Can you just send the information to the decision maker and allow them to make the decision and come back if they have any questions? If it's a coordination meeting, does it need to be a meeting every single week or every single month? Can you just manage some of that coordination offline via email, WhatsApp or Slack just to check in with each other and coordinate your activity? If it does need to be a meeting, challenge. Are we ready to have the meeting? Particularly for a decision making meeting. Are the decision makers gonna be present? Is the information ready and available to make that decision? Bad meetings spawn more meetings, follow-ups, meetings to check in with the decision makers that weren't in the room. If we're not ready for the meeting, defer it and have it when we are ready. If it does need to be a meeting and we're ready to have the meeting, the third challenge is, do you need to be at the meeting? If it's an information sharing meeting, do you need to do something with that information? Do you need to be there real time you just have a download afterwards. If it's a decision-making meeting, are you going to actually influence that decision? Or can you just find out the outcome offline later on? And if you have another team member, a peer, your manager, one of your direct reports going to the meeting, do you really need to both be there? Can you just let them be at the meeting, trust them to participate, input and feedback to you afterward? As well as tackling the problem head on, we also need to tackle the root causes of too many meetings. Tough on meetings, tough on the causes of meetings. Poor information sharing is often a reason for more meetings and more people at meetings. If you can be better at ensuring the information is cascaded accurately, comprehensively, and quickly after meetings, you'll find that fewer meetings are needed and fewer people are needed at those meetings. Another key root cause of too many meetings is FOMO, fear of missing out. Fear of missing out of that face time and visibility, particularly with senior stakeholders across the organisation. But challenge yourself and challenge your team. Does it really add value to the organisation by saying one or two insightful comments in a long meeting? Or should we be rewarding, recognising, promoting people that drive forward business priorities? Recognise those. It will change the culture of the organisation and fewer people will feel they have to be at meetings purely for visibility. The last key root cause of having too many meetings, particularly in large and complex organisations, is unclear decision-making rights. If you can clarify how decisions are made, who makes them, 
you can find that a whole host of meetings suddenly are no longer necessary. If you want to find out more about how to clarify decision making rights in your organisation, check out this video here. Or if you want to find out how to make those fewer meetings better meetings, check out this video here.